Howdy, it's Matt, and yesterday you may have seen the unboxing video of the Ultra Strike, and this is a follow-up video, the which I'm recording the morning after, because certain things have come to light post that video, which I feel really important need to be shared with you. Now, what are those things in a nutshell? And by the way, I will cover them in more detail in the rest of this video, but I know that those of you just want it like too long, don't read, okay? So the short version is, that there was quite a bit of discussion with a couple of you about my comment around the air intake holes and also a very peculiar comment about antennas causing drag. And those are the two big ones which I want to cover off in this shortened version. The first one is that the Ultra Stripe, which I've probably stuck a uh, picture up on the screen, it has three bloody great big holes on it. Uh, and unfortunately, there's a couple of people talking absolute shite. Um, and what I mean by that is that Keep in the back of your mind that the Zo HD Ultra Strike is meant to be a fast model. Whether I personally go on and turn it into a long range model, whether you turn yours into a long range model or maybe some proximity FPV is completely up to you. But the basics of the, the, the idea, ideology behind the Ultra Strike is to make a fast model. Now, it did come up in the forums yesterday, and it was a bit of a joke that the antenna, for example, crossfire antenna, would cause drag for the model. Now, this is one of those things which is, and you probably can see the great big gaping holes on the model itself, is that a tiny piece of wire isn't going to cause that much drag compared to the three absolutely enormous great big holes which are in the model. Now, that's my point. This model has three massive great big knacker ducts in it to get airflow to the ESC at the back. Now, this is my point, and I'll cover it in more detail in the rest of this video, which is that you don't need those three great big knacker ducts on the model when the solution to the overheating problem of an ESC or the cooling problem of an ESC is so easily mitigated because I'll probably just draw on your screen is that you just mount the ESC at the back in maximum airflow and then you can get rid of your free great big air vents which look sexy but cause drag are completely unnecessarily and that's the point of this video is to provide positive constructive feedback to ZoHD so that they can go Matt may have a point here and we can open this up for discussion uh, and there's also a couple of other things which have annoyed me especially around the server placement which we will cover in the rest of the video so that's the short version let's jump into the main video I hope that makes sense and of course any questions or comments do let me know underneath this video because I'd really appreciate the feedback uh, but remember in the scheme of things a tiny piece of wire does not cause that much drag compared to three massive great big bastard holes in a model for which is supposed to be a fast one. Let's put things into perspective and get our order of priorities correct from the offset. I hope that makes sense. Howdy, it's Matt. And yesterday I released the video on the unboxing of the SoHD Alpha Strike. However, this is the day following and I've been received some feedback and I feel that and I've gone to build this model and I've discovered a few things as well uh, and there's a couple of points which I want to raise with you because I think they've been overlooked and overshadowed and I watched somebody else's video and cringe to be frankly honest. So with that said I'm going to read out a comment uh, which came in from North49. Uh, it says Matt I am confused with the AR wing you made a big deal about the wing needing more airflow which in your case at the time posting your vid uh, you had somewhat a small ESC which made sense for the ESC you had I have done a bigger uh, I would have done a bigger one personally but for one you want to choke off the but for, but for this one you want to choke off the air vents remember that was a big thing which I mentioned in the unboxing the size of these knacker ducts are absolutely massive uh, and get mad on that um, but on the old uh, but on the alpha I would open up the ingress instead of closing off the air scoops and then your ESC if of its appropriate side but stay cool I do not get why you want to do this on this one uh, uh, so it wouldn't matter of, of your kit, good luck on the maiden, etc, etc. And then we go on to have the rest of a conversation. Now, so what North is saying is that, Matt, I feel that you're making a fuss over these huge, great big air vents, and what's your beef? That's basically what North is saying. And what the issue is, or my point is, is that we have, and this model is designed to be fast, okay? 
As such, we are going to be running a little, quite a meaty motor on the back of it, and we need some air cooling to go over our ESC. The speed controller is going to get hot. Now, that's accepted. However, the way that this has been approached is perhaps not the best way, and this is the point which I'm trying to make, is that with this model, is that we want it to be as fast as possible, so free gaping holes on our model to cause drag, especially when there's inadequate exit holes for the air to escape from the model, is going to be stopping our model from progressing forwards because these three holes are stopping it to going forwards. So I, I hope that makes sense, okay? Three bloody great big holes is going to cause drag. Makes sense, okay? So, how do we get around this? How could have this been done differently? And the answer is extremely simply, and also there's another frustrating compromise which has been made with this model, uh, which we'll get to in a few moments, which is, the simple way would have been to include a very small air vent so that there is some air going through the fuselage uh, and maybe a small air vent at the back. That will keep the requirement of a barometer, for example, satisfied, okay? And there would be some airflow in there just to remove a bit of heat off the, the battery, for example, or any components were inside, okay? We don't need a lot. We don't need that much air hole, okay, through the top to be able to provide that. However, so if we block off this one and block off the two side ones, well, how do we keep our ESC cool? And the answer to that is absolutely so simple, is that if I just grab an ESC off the side, is that you literally mount the ESC on the top of the model in maximum airflow. The best example which I can give you is the XUAV Mini Talon. The only and the best place to mount an ESC on a Mini Talon is up here on the top of the tail. You literally get maximum airflow across the back of the Mini Talon. Uh, I've known so many people who have burnt out ESCs on Mini Talons where they've been frying them, uh, and, uh, and because they tuck the ESC up inside, and this is what this model has been designed for, is to have the ESC back here on long motor wires and to be stored inside. So these air vents are actually a requirement because of the way that the model's been designed. We need Need the air to go through the model so that we can cool the ESC at the back because it's going to be absolutely cooking. So this is my point and that was the point which I didn't very well explain and hence North picked me up and then somebody else actually did as well. So the simple way around this is that you mount your ESC back here in the foam section. Above there that means that we can block off all the air holes, we reduce our drag mahusively so that we end up with ultimately a faster model because we're not got three great big and I don't think it's really coming out on camera to appreciate how large these air scoops are uh, on the top of the model so three points of drag sealed up with a piece of tape we stop that we make the ESC on the top and that's how we solve it so we end up with a faster model um, does it look as cool because it doesn't have knacker ducts well you could make these a quarter of the size and they would be per perfectly adequate. So they don't need to be this big at all. Uh, and that was the point I was making in the previous video. Now there is something which has been uh, brought to my attention now that I've gone on to try to build this model. And the first thing is, is the, the servos. The servos which ZoHD chose to put on there were some 5.6 gram tiny little servos uh, and they are bottom mounted. Now I have an issue with that twofold. First things first is that what ZoHD, and again the reason why I'm making this video is so that we can provide them some constructive feedback so they can improve it next time. Now I know the reason why they did this and I appreciate that but the thing is, is that they kind of left us all in a bit of a stumbling block because unless you go and pay the extra for the plug and pay kit, so you end up with the little piddly servos which are in the back, uh, you are going to use some random 9 gram servos to fit uh, in the servo slots which you've got. The issue is, is that A, you have to cut those out, and B, I don't know if you can see how much they are raised up out the side or the bottom of the model, is because you basically can't 
use standard nine gram servos in here without having them literally pointing at the bottom of the model. Now, the simplest way around this, in my humble opinion, was A, to have the servo top mounted, and yes, that doesn't look as pretty. This comes down to aesthetics, okay? There is a reason why they've gone for a top mounted servo control horn mechanism, which is the right way of doing it. The way which it's been implemented is not the best way of implementing it, because the best way would have been is to have the servo mounted on top, uh, and use a standard size servo, not something unique to this model, which is a little 5.6 gram, just use and used a standard nine gram size servo, which we all have uh, available to us. And again, this is affecting me because I bought the kit version, I didn't get sent or didn't get purchased the kit, uh, the plug and play version. Of course, that would all been happy days, but me, like you, are probably on a budget. And I've bought this model and I'm using the parts which I've got available to me and I'm not going to spend 40 euros or more on uh, specific parts of this model. I'm going to use what I've got here. Now also to compound that is, is that with that servo is that I've tried melting out some of the phone and I've got it on a slight angle. You'll see that it's in there, but that's as far as I can go before it starts destroying the top of the model, which you can't really see on the camera. Ah! You can, you can see how close I am in there. You'll see that dark patch on there. Uh, how close I am to the top of the foam. And to be honest, actually, I'm here the morning after thinking in, in hindsight, what I should have done was just cut out the servo and mounted it in the top. And I think I actually may just do that. I'm adding this in because I didn't actually include it in the first revision. There's another something really annoying which was not done and I can't believe ZOHD have missed this out. Which is that if you need to adjust your servo, now uh, I am going on the basis that ZOHD didn't do this because they just simply assume that you should be buying the plug and play version and why would you ever want to do this. However, we're not in that reality. We are in the reality that I bought the kit version. And my little beef is, and it's so simple for them to fix, and I can't believe it was not in there, is that if you need to adjust the control horn for your servo, I've had to go and take the craft knife out and then cut a hole in there so I can get the screwdriver in there without having to rip out the servo. Now, a completely unknown company uh, called Atom RC, uh, you will see that there's a great big long slit in there, which does mean that if I needed to, and ironically I did need to change the control horn position on there, it would be extremely simple for us to put the screwdriver down that slit in there into the screw hole on the top of there. I think I even noted that in the unboxing of this model, uh, that it was a nice addition on there. Somebody had given it some faults. Uh, and again, uh, you know, the note which I made a few, well, you, you may or may not see in a few moments, or may have already seen, is that they went for the bottom mounted servo, and that does mean that we always catch all the crap on the bottom of it. And again, the reason why they did that was purely for aesthetics, because it doesn't look as pretty on the top, which was the same reasoning for this one. So yeah, another little bit of feedback for ZOHD was that include the screw driver holes on there so that we can change our control horn position when we need to because as you can see I've had to cut mine out because I needed to uh, because it was uh, completely overlooked uh, and I didn't realize I was going to need to change the position on mine and it was too late they were already hot glued in. Anyway let's cut back to the main video. Nakaducks. Currently on the Alpha Strike in its current form I do feel that they followed, they've gone down a Pacific route and I don't feel it's the right route. Okay, and the reason why I don't feel it's the right route because we've included three great big holes on the model for what is supposed to be a fast model. Okay, when it could have been very, very simply deviated by me just putting the ESC there. By having the ESC mounted here, we could have removed all these drag points on the model itself and ended up with a hyper, extremely well called ESC without any of the drag on there. So North specifically, I hope that makes sense. And of course, anybody else who's watching this later, I hope I've explained that to its depths. And the last thing as well, absolutely frustrated. I think the servo size is ridiculous and I think the servo placement is not the best. And we're kind of, and, and, and if you go on and buy one of these as a kit version and don't go for their uh, plug and play version, you're gonna run into exactly the same issue. Uh, and I am here now wondering 
and I think I probably should have done. Uh, I should have mounted these in from the top and I wouldn't have the issue which I've got here this morning, which is that I've got compromised servos in there. They're always gonna scuff. And to be honest, they should have just been on the top. And I think the only reason ZoHD didn't mount these on the top is purely down to aesthetics because it doesn't look pretty if there's a black servo on the top of the model, does it? Purely aesthetic wise. Now, if I was in the position of ZoHD, how would we get around that? Extremely simply, include a white sticker. It's that simple, okay? Uh, or make a feature of it, that's the other one. Uh, turn a negative, well, a visual negative in and turn it into a positive. Make a black sticker to go on top of it so that it becomes a feature of the wing itself. So let's not take it from a negative that it's being on the top and it doesn't look pretty. Let's flip it on its head and turn it into a feature by including some form of design on top, maybe um, a Nakaduk shape, for example, on there to make a fake one on top. I, I, I don't know, I'm just get, grabbing at straws for ideas there. So anyway, that is my follow-up on the ZoHD Ultra Strike. Uh, I hope that helps some of you, because I know a couple of you did mention that in the comments yesterday, uh, and today I'm a little bit frustrated. I'm here to come back to the workbench. Uh, I'd like to go out and fly this one today, but I'm a little bit pissed off because I can't believe I can't really use normal size servos in it. Uh, and I'm, I am here, really am wondering whether, did, how much hot glue did I stick them in with? Can I push this out? And perhaps should I just make them in on the top and it won't look as pretty as others? Uh, and that, I, I, I don't know right now, so it's a little bit frustrating. And I think I'm actually that frustrated with, I don't think I'm gonna end up getting it to fly it today. So that is one of the benefits, one of the quandaries which I have when I actually purchase models is that sometimes I don't buy the plug and play kit and I'm sure there's, well I know there's a couple of reviews which have already gone out, one of them like I mentioned a few moments ago, but, well we won't even go there on that. Um, but I've seen a, at least one review video on it, it was a little bit cringy to say the least because it was all just plug and play and I don't feel that's always real life because real life is that you go, most of us go for the cheaper option, don't we? We buy the kit version and then we put the components which we've already got into our kit and the reality is is that we can and I'm not gonna go out and you're not gonna go out and buy special products for a, a run of the mill model. So I'm a little bit annoyed this morning, um, but please don't let that detract. It could be the best thing ever in the sky. Uh, to give you a heads up, I'm actually going to build this twice. The first time around, I'm going to go with a more quieter setup uh, because where I want to fly this one, if I have enough time left today, uh, will be on a local farm and I need to keep it quiet there because I need to keep the farmer sweet. However, it is the flying weekend on Sunday, uh, so I may just beef this out with a 3,500 kV motor and just make it a full rag the nuts off model, which I'm actually, as I'm sat here, I think I just might just do that and delay the maiden video be, and wait till Sunday to get it recorded um, because I think that's more real life if that makes sense. Anyway, for myself, Matt, a big thank you to you for taking the time to join me here at the workbench. I wish it was on a cheerier topic, but I just wanted to explain my reasoning around those knacker ducks, why it didn't make sense when the solution was ridiculously simple. And I also wanted to share my frustration about the size and, and the placement of components in the model um, because basically if you don't go and buy the plug and play kit you're basically screwed and you're going to end up with either a half cot mess like this or to be honest what I think what they should have done is kept a standard size parts in the first place top mounted it and made a feature of that and again let me stress on there, the reason why I'm making this video is not to have a go at ZHD or anybody who's left other comments or well, on there, it's for me to clarify a little bit of confusion which we had and also to make these points so that potentially ZOHD can improve on those because I know what's gonna happen, I know what is happening right now is that certain people are going out saying it's the best thing ever uh, and actually in reality I think it's left wanting by quite a bit if that makes sense but we haven't even got it in the sky yet. Anyway, myself Matt, cheerios!